Welcome back to the continuation of our symposium this afternoon. It is now my distinct pleasure to uh, introduce Professor Michael Lairmore. Professor Lairmore earned his Doctorate of Veterinary Medicine in 1981 at the University of Missouri. He then completed a PhD in Experimental Pathology at Colorado State University and a postdoctoral fellowship in Molecular Retroviral Bio Virology, if I'm saying that correctly, at the Centers for Disease C Control in Atlanta. Dr. Lairmore is Dean and Professor of the University of California Davis School of Veterinary Medicine. Previously, he was Professor and Associate Dean for Research and Graduate Studies at the College of Veterinary Medicine at The Ohio State University. He is recognized internationally as an authority in comparative oncology and retrovirology. Sorry, I'm saying that incorrectly. In 2010, in recognition of his outstanding professional, professional achievement and commitment to service, he was elected to the National Academies of Science Institute of Medicine, one of the highest honors in the field of health and medicine. The National Institutes of Health has funded Professor Laramore continuously since 1992. He has authored or co-authored more than 175 scientific publications. He serves on the editorial board for viral immunology and is a reviewer for more than 30 journals. So uh, he clearly is effective at time management. <laughs> Professor Lairmore has been honored with numerous awards. The Ohio State University named him a Distinguished Scholar in 2004, and in 2005, he was named a Fellow for the American Association for the Advancement of Sciences. The American Cancer Society in 2008 awarded him the Hero of Hope Award for his outstanding contributions to cancer research. Please join me in welcoming Professor Lairmore. Thank you. And uh, that was, uh, I didn't expect my entire CD right, so it's quite a good <laughs> I won't touch that. Um, certainly by phenotype, I'm probably related to half the people in the room, so uh, I can't claim to be Irish, but probably at some point in our history, I, we do cross paths uh, genetically. Um, a little bit of a different presentation. I'm going to concentrate on programs and, and really look at programs that are in common between the UCDs, uh, UC uh, Davis and UC Dublin, uh, focusing on veterinary medicine. Uh, the veterinary school at UC Dublin we know very well. It's a member of the AABMC, the American Association of Veterinary Medical Colleges, and I interact with the dean quite frequently there, and we have very common programs. So it was wonderful to come here and, and be able to, to give an overview of of some of these programs. Our mission is quite simple. Uh, it's to advance the uh, health of animals, people, and the environment. And it really came a uh, culmination several years ago when we came together to really think about, you know, what is a common element of everything we do within the school, and that's uh, our mission. Our mission is to lead veterinary medicine. We're always uh, in the top ranking of veterinary schools, as, uh, and we, we really want to maintain that, so leading programs there. But also importantly, and, and really the basis of the school is to address societal needs, and you'll see that throughout this uh, presentation. So I'm going to give a presentation, an overview of the school, but then concentrating on what our subject is today, which is really uh, food programs, food programs that are uh, quite relevant for everybody in the room. Uh, our, our number one goal, of course, is to educate uh, students, uh, educate academic leaders in, in these areas, both medicine, veterinary medicine, uh, public health, environmental health and it really reflects the broad nature of our programs. Here's sort of a snapshot of the new class to give you an idea of what kind of students come to us. We have a class size of about 130, 140 students uh, per year. Most of them come with uh, already with a bachelor's degree, so uh, over 98% of them have uh, degrees when they come to us. Uh, then they enter the four-year veterinary program. Um, and you see they come to us from with a variety of professional interests, and I'm gonna concentrate today on those uh, primarily in food and public health, but I'll give you a, a snapshot of some of the others as well. Our curriculum is really uh, has some of these core principles, which is a transdisciplinary approach in terms of a curriculum as well. Uh, early exposure to clinical material and directed learning and development and problem solving. Uh, our goal in the in the overall curriculum, of course, is to is to produce entry level veterinarians, but offer them a wide variety of opportunities and all the other career paths as we as we know they need to be uh, engaged in. These are some of the clinical competencies that we uh, have as uh, really a key part of our curriculum. Importantly for us also is health promotion uh, as it relates to what we're talking about today, 
and biosecurity, zoonosis, and food safety. We know veterinarians play a unique role in that, and it's very important that they become leaders in that area and are trained in those uh, critical skills. Oops. I, uh, but that's another critical skill of a dean is the uh, <laughs> uh, And of course, one of the things we really want to uh, talk about in, is right in our strategic plan is to be at the forefront of uh, transdisciplinary research. And we do that quite well. We lead all of the veterinary schools uh, in research funding, uh, about $65 million, uh, annually. Uh, and uh, we have for a number of years, and most of our funding a large base, of course, comes from the National Institute of Health because we're health-related, but they also come from a variety of other portfolios, including USAID, uh, NIFA, and other uh, agencies. Um, just to look at some of the ways that we organize this school, we're mission-focused, and one of the ways that we do that is not only through the typical department structures, we have six departments in a veterinary teaching hospital, but also through centers, uh, and these centers are really there as uh, demonstrated, uh, similar to what we've talked about, uh, really a way to bring faculty together around common thematic themes and really accomplish more than they could uh, in individual departments. And they cover a broad aspect from One Health, uh, which is quite a large institute now, it's a $26 million annual budget, to also food, animal health, uh, food safety, oncology, biodefense, and these other subjects as listed. Center for Food Animal Health, these are some of the things that are important for the center. We use the center to distribute funding from the, the federal government and also from uh, our uh, state side as well. They're interested in, in very practical problems from uh, uh, risk issues uh, related to what the dairy industry is dealing with, but also, uh, importantly, the education of students and practitioners, emerging diseases, environmental health issues sustainable uh, agriculture, which is a, a very important thing for all of us, uh, and modeling and accurate diagnostics. So these are some of the topics that they're, they're I get it again. Trigger. Uh, some of the other centers, uh, other subjects, uh, just to mention one uh, briefly, uh, Pam Lines Grant, which is uh, her center, which is a counteract center, which is a collaborative center of excellence uh, for countermeasures for acute uh, intoxication. And these are housed uh, within the School of Veterinary Medicine uh, and is one of our examples of those programmatic centers. And it really comes, uh, as David mentioned, within the philosophy of going across borders. It's very easy to do research at Davis across uh, colleges, across different centers. Our One Health Institute is uh, one that is really organized around large programmatic grants and is really an umbrella organization that covers a wide variety of subjects. It has everything from a, a marine uh, mammal uh, group uh, as well as those that are involved in uh, pandemics. Uh, this is where the PREDICT grant, a USAID grant, uh, which has just been uh, refunded, I understand, uh, supports uh, really emerging pandemic uh, and the threats that we face there. And we only have to pick up the newspaper to understand the importance of, of that kind of work. So our One Health approach is really uh, to a recognition, a recognition that these global health challenges are really require a transdisciplinary approach. So uh, this might be an example of, of uh, as, as, we, as we know, all of us are involved in, is as these complex problem involved not only the problem, and it could be focused on a water issue, but really needs to bring in all of these other aspects to solve some of these problems. And we, we talk about examples, but uh, we have these every day uh, in terms of some of these that crop up. A good example in, uh, in California was in 2006 with this outbreak of uh, contamination spinach which really required a transdisciplinary approach of, of multiple different groups and involved in effective policy, education. As we talked about with our uh, one, uh, our World Food Center approach, these are the kind of things that really uh, is a common theme throughout the school. Another important aspect is uh, globally and internationally is to build capacity. Many of these uh, programs, and this is a, a slide from the PREDICT grant, a very important aspect that is build up capacity and as we work with other countries, uh, here's an example of a statistic where they trained over a thousand field personnel. Uh, this particular project also has to build the capacity to, to uh, detect emerging pathogens in the environment. Uh, and these are the kind of things that uh, work and, and very much involve a collaboration with local governments, uh, many NGOs, many uh, type of funding agencies. Here's an example of, of the type, and, and uh, you've seen this before, but it really illustrates that all of us have this common need for partnerships uh, among 
all of these agencies in order to make these programs work. We are very focused on graduate education as well. We have uh, four graduate programs uh, as listed here, and we support them in a variety of ways, uh, training grants to uh, helping on research symposium and funds for uh, recruitment efforts. Uh, one of those programs, a long-standing one that often involves public health measures, is the Masters in Preventive Veteran Medicine, which has been around and developed by Calvin Schwabe, who is really one of the founders of, of One Health uh, Area. Has about uh, 900 graduates now that are really uh, all over the world in terms of their uh, efforts uh, in NGOs to government. And that program is uh, illustrative of this uh, transdisciplinary approach. Another important program for us to train is veterinary students that are interested in research. We have a dual degree program called the VSTP program for veterinary scientists. Small program because it uh, pays for their tuition and scholarships during school, much like a, a medical doctor dual degree program. Uh, the alumni uh, are very, uh, it, this is a, a program that has high, very high value. Uh, as you see here, many of these go back into academic settings or research setting. I highlighted Brian Bird because right now he is in Sierra Leone uh, in the Ebola outbreak uh, and has been called to, to action from the CDC. Uh, we've recently opened this uh, new um, research building, opened in 2012, about the time uh, I arrived. It's a, 50,000 square foot uh, total research building, which has four floors of modern research facilities to house these interdisciplinary programs, uh, which has given us really nice space. We're very proud of our, our clinical programs as well, not only because they educate our students, but also they also provide outlets uh, for research as well. We have a variety of, of advanced patient care uh, specialties. We have the largest residency program in the country. And many times students come to us uh, and, uh, from uh, other schools, including uh, UC Dublin, uh, for the residency training as well. Many of these residents go on to graduate training and go on and uh, do research projects as well in a variety of areas. Uh, the clinical residency programs are, are exceptional and, and we, we see these as the next leaders and disciplines uh, as related to uh, specialists uh, in the field. And this in includes uh, large animal medicine, for example. We've begun uh, to parallel clinical trials uh, to get translational medicine uh, from bench to bedside and, and out. Um, and one of the things that is really gratifying is the, is the collaboration with the School of Medicine. Our clinical trial center is really uh, a parallel to what happens in Sacramento. Uh, and now we have uh, over 90 studies going with client-owned animals. And this really gets us a chance to, to take those uh, innovations uh, directly into our patients. And this is a, a growing area for us. Uh, an area that I, I think has got a lot of potential in the future for application. Uh, one of our uh, main uh, goals is to advance the well-being of animals and people in California and around the globe. Uh, you've heard about the 100K Genome Project. This is Bart Weimer's project is in that new building.